we're here a little bit early for grand finals. We say a little bit early, but it's already 9.30ish uh, local time. Uh, we're about to see one, maybe two more games of Netrunner. Um, this is to determine the winner of the final ever Fantasy Flight Games Android Netrunner Toronto Regionals. Uh, of course, I got Eric here with me, and now we're going to take some time to look at these two lists. These are lists that we've seen on stream a few times already, but uh, is there anything that stands out to you as being particularly interesting or cool? Uh, yeah, so th what strikes me in Dean's list immediately is two times uh, Divine Conquer. Now, that's expensive, and it's kind of dubious, like, choice over Dirty Laundry, like, uh, arguably, okay? But Divine Conquer is a very aggressive car, and it is, I mean, it's in the title of the card, right? It's called Divine and Conquer. If, if you add the fact that he has a rebirth, the fact that he does he have the wheel? Yes, he has a copy of the wheel. Yeah, yeah. And he's he got that also wheel has the turntable, right? Yeah. So th then you really start to put the um, the corp in a position where even shedding just one agenda can really uh, turn yeah. the game around. Yeah, Maxwell James is amazing remote pressure. That's that card has really been popularized. It's excellent. Like just see, like the additional link is just icing on the cake, right? Like some t that's not relevant in most g lists of run Maxwell James, but for that to exist and then oh. being able to derez at will after an HQ hit. Quite good, quite good. Able this, this, to is, this is a pretty solid, uh, I mean, this, is, this has become the standard. The, the Divine Conquerors, I think, are starting to grow on players. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the single copy of Amaku is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and Dean does have the Archivist. Yeah. Um, and our, what, Nisei is a security agenda. Yep. So that, that bad pub can that really is very relevant, add up. for sure. Um, worth noting, however, uh, Dean is currently, uh, he's not running DDoS, so like, uh, sort of like, I guess Maxwell James is like an Urzatz DDoS sometimes when you need it to, if you really need to pressure the remote early on and you may be missing a few pieces of conspiracy. Um, with that said, uh, Terence's list is uh, similar to Dean's, but with a few uh, things changed here and there. Um, the Singleton Arc Lockdown, as we mentioned earlier, if he draws that early, that could be very relevant to is, the right? proceedings. Only, like, the other, uh, other Val list that we saw this, um, this weekend had triple uh, copies of Breakers. Mm -hmm. Now, oh, okay, so there's two Amakuras. Yeah, there's, two, okay. um, there's uh, eight Breakers total, two, uh, two Turtles, two Black Orchestra, two MK Ultra, the two Paper Cup. Oh. Uh, the Arc Lockdown has to come from an awkward situation, uh, yep. a, a bad inject, yep. but it's, it's not insignificant. Mm -hmm. And even so if you hit just one copy, um, it, it can really it can really just stall the game, especially with a fifty card uh, uh, Val deck. Oh, the two divide and conquer is very very taxing on the uh, on the influence, but uh, it's worth it for the effect of the card. That is a very strong card for sure. So we have the archivist without the mining accident. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, so these two are playing for the Rune Wars Championship. Uh, well, no, it's actually Kabanissa Wu, uh, but inverse. There we go. Yeah, yeah fully blank. There we go. Yeah. What is that thing? That's the trophy. It looks like the trophy. <laughs> yeah, your uh, FFG uh, production values have increased a fair amount, I guess. Uh, we're looking at some nice acrylics here. There is some discoloration there, but that's okay. We'll let it rock. All right, they're going to have it on the table as a play, uh, unless this is all a ruse, of course. Um, this is the type of list that Dean likes to pilot. It's disruptive enough in the right ways. Uh, it has accesses yeah. where you don't expect accesses to occur. It's got uh, the one of the arguably the best R and D pressure in the game and yeah. in indexing. Um, you, you've been along, around long enough uh, to answer this question. I, I don't know that this is true, but. Is am I not wrong in saying that Dean, in fact, popularized turntable? Yeah. So actually, um, turntable was rumbled about in other meta games, but uh, certainly locally and uh, especially as a strong voice online, Dean has uh, shown good results with turntable uh, as like uh, as far away as like three four years ago at this point. It looks like Dean actually has a great opening hand. Uh, yep. Scarcity didn't make an appearance, and I don't see E strike. But he has sure gamble. Yep. 
He's got breakers. Okay, Liberated's down, but I, I didn't notice. So he gets so. a turntable down right away. This is going to be a game-defining card for both players. Terrence understands that any incidental hits, any agenda sniffs could rob him of a point, could rob him of a, right. an active Nisei counter. Uh, it's going to matter a lot, especially uh, when you have lines where you can just incidentally like single or double access and uh, just ruin the corpse board state. Here's an, here's an inject. Uh, he's looking for an E-strike, it looks like, just to kind of clear it off. He does not find it. He does he find some Operation Econ, though, which is good for him in this situation. The th it's, it's, it can be very tempting to go for a stray laundry, but... Um but the yeah. core player uh, no, it's, can it's really ruin uh, yeah. your day with that. So yeah. you've got to be really careful yeah. if you do, in fact, do that. Terrence is just under the uh, hyper-threatening threshold here. Uh, he's at seven creds, which is not enough to res a DNA tracker. Uh, he's going to DL. that's why I believe uh, they're fighting over it. Yeah. They know it's this is, uh, this is a spicy potato. Okay, getting the five. Unfortunate. Oh, uh, uh, where he did he? he gives oh, it to him. He gives it to him. Okay, sure. So no Cortex, no IP block. Yeah. That would have been a surefire. Yeah, that would be an, uh, a res guaranteed. Uh, Dean kind of can surmise that this is expensive ice here covering the centrals. We've got an install Look. advance advance here. So this is just a classic empty quick play. NGO. I mean, you say that now, but of course, uh, Terrence <laughs> understands that he needs to ruse Dean a little bit in order to maybe get the leg up here. Now, now that I think about it, what's this list, the fact that it has two copies of Divide and Conquer, as well as two Maxwell James, means that you really start to split the opponent. Yes. These commitments... So, Terrence knows that it's important to protect HQ, yes. that the server is going to be pressured by Maxwell, mm -hmm. and that you can't leave the archives empty. And let's not even forget Rebirth. Mm -hmm. And and Dean is a creative re Rebirth player. I've seen him Rebirth into... He doesn't go for the obvious, uh, you Omar know, or Kong. the the prefer yeah. the preferable Omar. Yeah. He, I've seen him go into Alice. I've seen him go into Quetzal. Yep. He will uh, believe me if he this guy rebirths, he's going to go <laughs> for the maximum value that he can derive. Yeah, from it. Alice is a great rebirth target, of course. <laughs> Dean Ping eights for liberated, uh, but then hitting it a couple times in order to make some money back. Sorry, a single time to hit make some money. So no zero. Yeah. Uh, no clan vengeance yet. Yeah, this is uh, less of a fast start for Dean, but of course he does start Oak, so this is going to be credits turn for Terrence as well. I like this. Yeah. Uh, Terrence is building, and he th the longer that scarcity stays down, the, the better. Yes. Uh, not only because this is really taxing Dean and his uh, proclivity to rely on resource-based economy, <laughs> uh, but he's got the zero going here. Um, he's got the Clan Vengeance going here. That was just a beastly draw off of his I've Had Worse. Um, he's going to get the engine running pretty fast right. and pretty rapidly. Uh, being able to threaten a full hand wipe in a couple turns, it's going gonna, it's gonna to really change how Terrence has to approach this matchup. Let's give, a, let's give a shout out to Jonas Wilson out there. <laughs> who who uh, jocularly remarks T Dean and Terrence scumbag versus good guy, and that clearly means that 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 Terrence is the scumbag, <laughs> and and Dean is the good guy. Yeah. Is that correct? Uh, I, I somehow. <laughs> A part of me thinks that's incorrect. Yeah. Yeah. Give uh, Dean's reputation for season. Let's uh, just just say that. And here's. The back of his jersey right now. <laughs> so here's the copy of Rebirth, and, and you know what? It's it's not too early for that. There's a dividing conquer. I like this right now because what it means is that. Yeah. It, so it, confidently it, rebirthing. The uh, Dean and I, I. He's got to go for Omar here. So let's take a look. Uh, he's uh, forgetting to put the counter on Clan, but it's okay. Fixing it now. He's going. Is he going for Omar? Looks yeah. like. Oh, okay. Here's a Rashida. Uh, Rashida, of course, procs right now. Terrence is going to be able to get some money and some cards. Uh, sometimes going to be not as relevant as it was a few turns ago when Clan Vengeance was still in Dean's heap. But as is, it's bad times. Uh, right now, Dean is cl the clear favorite. Uh, although Terrence still has some ability to counterplay here, just the uh, open vengeance on the table is going to be a giant tempo swing at some point in the future here. My feeling is that Terrence doesn't actually have an agenda. Mm. And that's a bad thing because what he wants to do is kind of top duck it and shove it in. Yep. But okay, so maybe he does have one, uh, but it would seem to be the case that his remote is not strong enough. The dean is is able to keep um, Terrence honest enough on the yeah. the, the the sneak door, so to speak. <laughs> so um, 
uh, Dean's going to start off with a nice zero play. He's going to see an Ice Carver here, which is going to be uh, pretty important at some point. Well, he's going to pay eight again for another Liberated. This is, while not full value, still significant and allows him to maintain a threatening credit pool. Uh, at the moment, he has no easy Omakua target, as all three servers uh, central have been iced. Um, and there's nothing to access in the remote. What do, what do we know about uh, Terence's hand right here? I, I mean, he's got to be sitting up a survey okay, so remote, the, and there's that's a jam. Um, okay, so he drew an He's going he's he's to install. He's going to install something into uh, the server here. Uh, Nisei Mark II, uh, which, if scored, will give him the power counter. He, Dean's going to start off with a zero. Nothing. I like oh, losing the Ice Carver. That's uh, It's going to change his math a fair amount. Uh, of course, Ice Carver making a lot of the Jinteki Ice a lot easier, often representing a savings of three. Um, I think that it is it is pretty interesting that Scarcity is staying down for so long. Yes, and he hasn't been able to find the employee strike and he hasn't cleared an agenda. So here we are. It's going to be a full wipe of the liberated accounts. He's going to discard a paperclip. Terrence is going to advance. He's going to score the Nisei. Oh, wow. So he very, did do that. Very nice. I like this play. And it says, okay, look. Yes, I see you putting down all the weapons, but I'm going to keep the tempo on yep. by scoring out an agenda. Here's a black orchestra installed raw from hand. Uh, he's going to lose a daily cast to a zero pull. It's going to give him a card. Uh, it's going to give him two cards. It's going to give him one credit, right. and it's going to give him a clan vengeance. Now, y y Dean was looking uh, very relaxed at the beginning of the game, but you see his, his kind of body language accelerating, and he, he knows that this game is on. Yep. And, and uh, th this isn't unique to Dean. I think anyone who has faced MT with a Nisei scored knows that it's a whole different deck when th when that's the case. Yes. Yep. You, you feel even uh, relief when you see that the first agenda scored, is future perfect, SSL, or right. whatever yeah, other agendas yeah. that people even, are playing. Yeah, even an SSL is not something that you're necessarily mad to see. It's a Nisei that really makes playing against this uh, sort of hybridized, rushy glacier, Jinteki, now um, I'm a threat. In, yes, I'm, I'm very curious to see what the HQ ice is, because I know that Terrence knows that HQ will be an important server to defend. That means that you you have to slow down the Maxwell. Yes. And you can't give easy accesses. Yes. Even, like, say, for example, like, if Dean was able to load up the turtle. Here we go. As correctly surmised, it's a, it's a DNA tracker. Uh, Dean probably sniffed that out earlier in the game when he ran HQ and uh, Terrence refused to res. That it would be an expensive ice. Uh, as a result, he's thrown down a, a black orchestra from hand this turn. Um, interesting choice because he could have also taken the chance with zero anyway. And if he loses the black orchestra, he loses the black orchestra. In fact, that's even better for him because he can install it from heap in that manner. Right. Um, I, d I don't think Dean is liking this right now. So that was a, so. This is not an MTI installed uh, piece of ice. No, this, so this was is a, the this DNA. Was, this is a DNA. Tracker. No e strike down. Like I mean, yeah, it can't be particularly exciting to go in. Yeah. And even at, let's say uh, D, um, let's say Terrence just adds an IP block or something. That extra tag, you've got the scarcity down. Okay. You're not necessarily going to score. Uh, to break I like sub. I like the pressure that Terence is placing yep. on Dean right now. He's losing. Uh, he's getting another clan vengeance counter, which uh, this is enough to really uh, just wipe Terence's hand whenever necessary. Uh, Dean has chosen to break two subroutines on DNA Tracker with Black Orchestra. And so there's an early there's fire, dash. and he. I like this too on Dean's right, part because coming, there's a crick there. Oh, there's he's the going to pay for the Black Orchestra. Uh, with the black orchestra, and okay. I, I gotta say, Terence is getting a ton of value for the ice that this he has. In fact, he's finding, oh, he's finding two that agendas. Is painful. That's really great. He's going to switch out as well. Uh, he might have considered firing, considering he knew what was going into the archives. Just to tax him for another yeah, three. Just to tax him for another three. I agree. Yeah. Uh, as is like because he knew he was going to lose a counter regardless. Now that is that's him for another three and another click would have been a pretty big game here. Uh, with that said, he's going to give a quick search here. Uh, Dean is low on cards and doesn't have any way to. Oh no, he's got three cards in hand. That's we 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 need to emphasize what just took place there. D Dean did not know that his clan would net him anything, and not only did he get two agendas, he got two. He got two good very, and easy to score agendas. agendas yeah. Philotic, yes. Uh, he was able to turn table the, uh, the naked Nisei for the one with the counter on it. This is very relevant here. He's going to run there. Um, he's going to throw that away. It's an archivist. He's going to uh, draw two there. So this is click one. 
I don't know if he can threaten this right now. Um, he doesn't have the money to do so. If he had a stim hack, then this would be a different story. Uh, as is, the scarcity is cleared. He can maybe contest it on a next turn, but at the moment, with a sans stim hack in hand, he's just gonna—he's not gonna be able to go into HQ for the uh, for the successful hit. Uh, he could Omar the Crick and then perhaps have enough to run through both pieces of ice on the exterior server. Um, with that said, he didn't do that yet. He's going to he's going to sniff first. Going to take a look to see what Terrence has there. That's an IP block. Um, he does have an AI breaker up, so this is actually hyper relevant here. Um, he's going to take a tag immediately, but he's going to install the clip after doing so. Uh, this will cost him a grand total of seven credits. This is interesting. I mean, Terrence knows that the tempo has to be kept up. There's a tracker. Very nice. And loses three. GG. On that's game. So we have a champion. Yep, Fast and Furious. Dean Tran takes it. Very nicely played. Uh, Terrence went a little fast there. Um, he sniffed out. Dean successfully sniffed out that that was not an NGO. Uh, Dean knew that maybe Terrence was feeling a little pressured based off of that beastly clan vengeance. Um, you you really do have to give respect to Terrence for for understanding the tempo of the game and, and say yes, okay, you just scored, but I'm not going to sit back because I know that's yeah, that's the losing that's, strategy. Yeah, that's he goes strategy. and shoves it. He had to shove. Like at that point, that's just really something that he had to do. Um, my only thing that I disagree with is that uh, I almost certainly he should have fired the Nisei Mark II counter. That's true. There was the no, there was run. no reason not to do that. Yeah, it would have taxed him another click and three credits, which is not insignificant in this matchup. Um, of course, obviously uh, Dean could have ended the game with perfect. Uh, he's not the Rune Wars champion, but he is the Netrunner <laughs> champion. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Good. Great game. Uh, great great game. friends. Great competitors. Uh, yeah. and what a tournament. Thanks for tuning in to uh, Toronto Regionals here. Uh, I, I work. Yeah, of course. Um, do we want to interview Dean at all? Oh, okay. So uh, actually, this venue is uh, closing right now. So we don't actually have the time for a winner's interview here. Uh, congratulations to Dean Tran uh, taking the last Toronto tournament, uh, and rightfully so. Like uh, one of the pillars of our local community here. Uh, this was uh, all Ontario top four and an all Toronto top three. So it's kind of nice to have uh, the final kickoff be local boys. Um, thanks for tuning in, everybody.